There are a lot of fantastic anime this spring 2019 season. Between all the fluffy fox girls, imaginary cell phones, and returning favorites, except you, you go away. I said go away. It's really no wonder that you might miss out on a gem or two under this flood of content, all vehemently trying to get your attention with their plot. Oh yes, that plot. So what anime could I possibly be referring to that deserves a slot in your already oh-so-crowded schedule? Well, it's a music anime that resonates with the heart, and it- What? Did you think I was talking about Carol in Tuesday? <laughs> of course not. The fuck you say to me, you little shit! Mm, the anime in question is none other than Aimu Sensei's Kono Ototomare, produced by Platinum Vision, this truly is an adaptation done right. Remaining faithful to the source material while simultaneously breathing new life into the work through the use of stunning visuals and sound. Kono Ototomare is easily one of the best anime to air this spring season. And apparently fall season because they already announced season 2! But good sound and visuals aren't the only thing that make an anime good I hear you yelling from a proverbial box. And you'd be right to say this, but as it turns out, Kono Ototomare shines brightest when looking at its characters and their development on what is a one of a kind journey with each other and, of course, the Koto. As far as plot goes, it's pretty simple. As they say, We've got our not-so-average group of high school kids who restore a Koto club on the verge of collapse and continue to do Koto things. It's nice and easy, except for when the first new member you get is a well-known delinquent, and everyone and their grandma is trying to destroy the club for one reason or another, when you're just trying to mind your own business, but that's just life, am I right? <laughs> I mean, it's a Koto club, they play the Koto, what's so special about it? Well, the multifaceted dynamic between the characters and the Koto is truly special, and a rare few anime can actually portray such a relationship well, if at all. The Koto is an instrument said to be modeled after a dragon, a mythical creature with the ability to transcend realms. And so does the Koto's sound transcend the feelings from the player's heart to the listener. Which is convenient when you have a group of socially defunct people who struggle to communicate through normal means. We follow our characters bond over this seemingly unappreciated art, accepting each other's flaws and growing as friends. You've got your classic not-too-dense, self-confidence lacking glasses boy, Kurata Takizo, prodigy and heir to a famous Koto school, Hosuki Satawa, the Three Stooges, adorablest girl, Hiro Kurusu, and the most potent weapon in all of anime, a mythical creature known only to exist in the legend, the Tsundere Delinquent. Oh. 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 Someone get me some liquid nitrogen because I think my heart is finally falling out. When Kudo Chika isn't grabbing knives and throwing desks, he's busy eating Kuma Onigiri and being the most adorable creature on the planet. In all seriousness though, Kudo is genuinely one of the most interesting characters to show up this season. With more depth than the Mariana Trench, Kudo is anything but a one note character despite wearing his heart on his sleeve. His motivations and what caused him to be like this are clear. People don't just come out of the womb wanting to play the Koto. And Kono Ototomare does a great job of showing us why a thug like Chika would ever consider picking up such an ordinary boring looking instrument. It's because of his grandpa. But that's enough about Chika, because you also have his best friend and mom of the year, Tetsuki, uh, I mean Tetsuki, the absolute legend and caretaker of the delinquents, going to any length to keep best boy Chika safe. Not to mention the absolute legend that is Glasses Tetsuki. <laughs> In reality, these are only a handful of the characters in this series, not even all the main ones at that. Each one of them, even the ones we might not like, are fleshed out and given an appropriate amount of time to explore their character and their motivations. Everything feels like it happens for a reason. In terms of the decisions we see the characters make, they don't deliberately act like mongoloids for the sake of creating drama. <laughs> the tent scenes are built on a solid foundation. You know what's happening and why it's happening. The stakes are clear, making it easier to get invested and leaving you with stunning moments like when Chika first hears Hoski play, sparking a newfound respect for her. And when the club first performs Ryusugan, saving their club. Despite having powerful and dramatic moments, there's also comedy that complements it perfectly, balancing the atmosphere without going too far in the hopes of delivering a funny joke. Never feeling forced, this anime knows what it wants to be and does a good job of being it. Now, you still might be on the fence about giving this anime a try, and I guess that's fair enough because when you looked at the tags of this anime, you didn't see that one very, very important word. 
romance. And what's the point of all this pretty art and sound if there's no romance? Well, you'll be pleasantly surprised to know that this anime does in fact have romance. However, it is not the main focus. So there's none of this. Or this. Or this. It more closely resembles Chihayafuru's romance, except without the scary love triangle. The anime is about a group of friends playing the koto. Romance is just a little added bonus. And that being said, there are a few adorable romantic subplots that make the characters involved 100% more adorable than they already are. And it's a wholesome experience to be treasured if I do say so myself. Now we talked a bit about the koto, but that much won't do it justice. For an instrument so many call boring throughout the first few episodes, the delivery during the performances really makes the whole experience come together. I mean, I've seen Clan Ad, Angel Beats, Plastic Memories, that time when Ash released his Butterfree, no problem. But when Chica solo started, I teared up unintentionally. The goal was to reach the audience with their feelings, and I can only say that it reached me. My anecdotes aside, this is probably one of the more well put together series to get an anime adaptation so far. It's been fantastic in terms of sound and visuals, and even if it's not your preferred genre, I recommend anyone watch this to see the unfolding of a beautiful story with great payoffs told through a different lens. You never know, you might just end up with a new favorite. I thank you all for watching, and I look forward to hearing what you're watching and reading in the comments. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed this, and until next time, keep watching anime. Oh, yes, I'm...